G'day folks, welcome to the uh, continuation of this Atlantic Ball campaign um, using new mic system. So let me know how the audio goes. Uh, hopefully it's just a little bit clearer uh, than what it's been. There's been a bit of, uh, I guess, administration in between these videos. I uh, put up a few sort of um, reports on activities of those waves. We had the first wave, second wave, third wave, which I reported on. Then we have the um, German movement, and well, to be honest, pretty quiet. Not much happens there. They can roll a die in a couple of areas. They're pretty much restricted out here on map D. There's a bit of movement on map C. Let me just point out, you can see these, these three units here have been activated and the engineers out here on the left. So they, they've got a decent roll on map C, Omaha Beach, and we're able to move. But a poor roll out on map E and no movement. Um, they were also, because of the landing at the Paras, they were forced to attack. You can see way out there, Karen 10. They were forced to attack. They suffered a stip loss and have retreated back to Karen 10. So there's now two um, German battalions defending just the one city hex. And they're kind of afraid to move out from there. So that's the situation as it finds us here. And uh, it's now the Allied reinforcement enforcement turn of turn two, I think. <laughs> it gets a bit tricky because we don't have the uh, it's turn two. We don't go with the determination or mulberry or air allocation or artillery resupplies. We go the allied turn, neutral supply determination. Um, and I, I mean, I'll skip that for now. I'll come back to that later. There's no, I mean, well, there potentially could be battalion breakup. It's interesting, all the, all the power companies landing in companies, and I think they can begin to build up into their battalions, but I'm just leaving them there for now. There's not a huge advantage in them doing so. Um, what I've really been doing out with the, the sort of um, six, Airborne, I'll just try and move into there. Six airborne here is providing with some um, decent defendable areas. So you can kind of see they've set up a bit of a perimeter. Uh, not a lot of movement taking place. You can see a few positions are beginning to establish improved positions. I don't think that'll last as soon as the Germans move. I think within four hexes of this, um, they have to stop what they're doing. So there are only pretty much two hexes where this can happen. And um, yeah, I focus the activity there. And then we have this wave of reinforced, a lot, a lot of allied reinforcements. But because I haven't opened any gaps yet, all the beaches are closed, all of these reinforcement battalions have to be broken down into companies. And that's what you can see here. A lot of the artillery can't land. Um, so they're delaying basically for subsequent waves, subsequent turns. And yeah, what we see basically is a lot of the infantry battalions arriving as reinforcements being broken down into companies. And they follow a bit of a special little procedure to arrive. Something to keep in mind, so this is turn two, midday, 6th of June. Something to keep in mind is that this is a high, high, high tide turn. And the penalties for leaning these reinforcing companies on high tide turns are a little more onerous on um, the allies. So basically, let me read through the landing of reinforcements. They have to be broken down to their companies. Um, each sub-beach possesses these future sea landing phase boxes, and I've, I've distributed them. Um, I can only, well, I don't know if I can only, but basically, um, I've explained this in, I think, the Omaha Beach playthrough that I did, but I'll cover it again. Basically, you need to roll a die per, per sort of wave landing and if say for example I roll a five on this beach because there are only two gaps open I will lose three companies here so that's pretty risky and here for example if I roll a five I only lose one company whereas yeah what this means is that sword beach is very dangerous for getting reinforcements on um, what I can do though 
I mean, I could delay these guys another turn. Oh, geez, it might actually be worth it. I don't know if they're, they're maybe just waiting one more turn, opening up. I don't kind of don't want them on that beach. I want them there. Um, if I wait one more turn, or at least one wave, there are th I can I can sort of wait for the first wave, get my demolition engineers to clear some more. I might do that actually, because basically we have up to three waves of landings, just like in the first invasion phase. Um, why wouldn't I do that? So during the infantry landing segment of any sea landing phase, uh, I roll the dice, blah, blah, blah. Yep, new companies can be placed in this box on each sea landing phase. So as, as we've sort of been discussing, as I've covered on the first turn, there are up to three of these sea landing phases that the allied player can go through. So, I mean, just kind of like making sense of all these rules as I go, I think it makes sense to kind of not land these units on the first sea landing phase, but rather try and roll for an improvement in these numbers and then bring them on with the second, maybe even third sea landing phase. The situation is definitely not desperate out at, uh, at Sword Beach. You can see the situation here. The beach is secure. <laughs> this is this is a huge disparity between what's happening on the beach and what these demolition points and gaps blown represents. Um, so this is basically telling me I haven't blown many gaps. I need to blow 12 to open the beach. But you look at the beach and it's not a German in sight. There's a coastal battery's way out the back here. Um, so yeah, an interesting kind of disparity between... Um, between the rules there. So look, thinking about this, I'm going to hold back. I may as well hold back them all because that beach is very crowded. If I try and land them immediately, they're going to run into some trouble. Um, <clears throat> one reason I'm thinking I may land here, one, two, three, four, five, six now. I can land six companies in these... Um, in these place six companies in these boxes i'd like to move these companies up i'd like to get them moving um and i have major general graham so he could potentially land with maybe three companies try to unpin some stacks here um maybe i'll just hold back here Or try and land him. Oh, one. Two, three. So he's only got a leadership rating of one. This is Brigadier Senior out here on the right on Gold Beach. But if he it gives me that one extra chance to un, potentially unpin units. They're doing pretty well at the moment. They're all fresh. It's just out here on the left where I'm about to get Graham. Now, with this in mind, if I shift over here to Omaha, um, uh, probably in a bit of a more, not desperate, but more of a position where I need to get these, these units on the beach. We've got German reinforcements. Now these guys cannot attack. They can move up, they can block with the allies, but they can't attack during the German combat phase until, um, until the beach is open. Um, they can, however, conduct small arms fire, which will pin the allied units. So maybe, 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 with this in mind, I don't kind of want to land. This is a good place to land here, and I'll get a second wave. I kind of don't want to land here, so I'll bring the 29th. I'm really bunching up the 1st and the 29th divisions out on the left here, because the right side of the beach uh, isn't in a good shape yet. Out on Utah, things are going peachy as heck. Um, yeah, look, there's maybe one or two pinned units, I think, somewhere in those stacks, but we're moving, and the biggest barrier here is I can't move fast enough. I get one hex movement per turn. Um, actually, it might be tough to, to hit this strong point. I may not be able to get it this turn. I may have to bring up a unit 
to here and here, and then wait until the next oh, next wave at least. This is the thing. They get one movement point per wave. Um, you may notice some um, disrupted airborne. They did try a few attacks. They failed. Uh, they're still kind of reduced. I tried to kind of quickly grab some of these locations, some air release. Uh, actually, no, there was an attack on there. It was just to the south, the roads. There's some of the coastal batteries there, which failed. All right. Look, I think we're ready to go, folks. That's the kind of overview. Let's um, let's jump into this allied invasion. No, it's, sorry, it's not the invasion phase. It's a special um, reinforcement phase. So. Pretty sure I got it right. So, landing phase during the infantry landing segment, they go through the sea landing phase, and these guys, whilst they're kind of placed in this area, hey Todd, yeah, it's early. I, I mean, I know it's, it's kind of still early evening for me over here, so it must be kind of really early for you. Um, so I start this uh, with an air bombardment phase. I get 18 abstract air bombardment points against resistance nests and batteries. So, 18 rolls, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Um, how am I going to do this quickly? Um, whew, what do I do? Basically, it's needing a Yeah, basically a roll of one, and it's not subject to modifiers. So it's a good opportunity, I think, here to target. Um, I can't target strong points, but resistance nests and coastal batteries. One per hex, and it flips everything. So certainly targeting this one, wanting a one. Oh, look at that. That, uh, now that uh, pins the entire... Hex. All resistance nests and batteries in that hex. All resistance nests and batteries. Well, that's the battery, but unfortunately, that's not a that's a company, so they won't be pinned, is my understanding. That's one. Then, um, look, I don't really need to target these guys because they won't engage in small arms fire. Neither will they. And again, these are eighteen rolls for all of the five beaches. Uh, hey Adam, how have I found the general flow of the game? Look, to be honest, this is this is still the invasion phase of the first day, and it is hugely time consuming. Um, there's a lot of admin. I mean, sorting out all these companies. I did this off camera. I didn't record it because it's really boring to go through. But it took me forever to break all these battalions down. Let me show you. I mean, some of these start the game in the breakdown box, but a lot of these new stacks here were reinforcing battalions um, I've had to go out and dig out all the companies once you've dug out all the companies you then have to <sighs> um, sort them out on beaches figure out where they should go stack them appropriately with stacking limitations and, and all this kind of stuff um, make sure they've got a path to a safe beach that's what I've been sort of doing off camera Another thing I should mention is I've moved my fleets around. So you may notice a sort of a reduction of these fleets off Gold Juno Sword, and I've increased the fleets off Omaha in particular. They'll now have, they'll now have 12 fire missions. And I've reduced the fleets off Utah, but I've redistributed them into fire missions of strength two. Um, so they're going to start targeting um, the coastal batteries. Um, pretty much any landing phase in a game, <laughs> yeah, yep. The problem, not the main criticism I have with this um, system, is it's just rolling buckets of dice. So, look, I'm making decisions now, I'm deciding where to target, but it's just kind of rolling dice then. Um, and it's just a lot of dice, it is really slow and time consuming, and that's just getting onto the beach. It is completely different to uh, the greatest day. I kind of the greatest day has what 
seven, eight pages of the naval sequence of play, but once you know it, it's a really cool little puzzle. You've got really interesting choices about do I target gaps or obstacles or nests and all this kind of stuff, and you kind of like, you know, be prioritized. You know, what do I land first? Do I land with my tanks, my engineers, my officers? Um, so you're making a lot of decisions, a lot of consistent decisions in the greatest day. You're not really doing that here. You're just kind of like, um, well, let's see what decisions I'm making. You can you can kind of decide. Um, yeah, look, I finally have a game table to contain. Yeah, look, I um, I'm liking it. It's 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 creates a. I mean, it's it's, it's Normandy. You know, D-Day it creates a really cool narrative. Um, and it's kind of but but it's fragile. Um, you know, Omaha could very easily fail. What happens if? Well, I'm not going to lose sword. This is going to very slowly accumulate. But you know, I'm struggling to clear those gaps on sword. You know, what happens if I if you don't kill that strong point? What happens if you don't open the gap? You spend hours and hours on Omaha to lose the game before the end of the first day, pretty much. And that's kind of a really big risk to take. Um, it's one of the reasons why um, I did Omaha Beach first. Um, and my thinking was, if I didn't, if I didn't sort of do any damage there, I was considering just restarting the game. Luckily, I didn't have to do that. Luckily, everything is going okay. Not going great. Not going poorly. It's it's going okay. All right. So I've got still 17, 17 rolls left. Um, they ignore strong points, but these two nests here I'd really like to destroy. So I'm going to target the one on the coast first. Miss. The one slightly inland. Miss. All right, so only one per target, keeping in mind. This coastal battery here. Oh, four is a miss. Um, ignores strong points. This resistance nest here is a miss. Um, all right, that's five rolls for Gold Juno Sword. And there's no other threats that I can target. So let's shift around to Utah region. Um, this resistance nest here, miss. Uh, the nests in the center here, really want one here. That's a miss. Next to them on the right, that's a miss. And next to them on the right, that's a miss. Okay, so I've got one hit so far and half my dice. Um, there's not much point firing at this nest out here. So I've got four, nine die left. Nine more air bombardments. These are abstract air bombardments, keeping in mind. And yeah, well, Adam, if um, Decision Games kind of redeveloped this um, as Atlantic War D Day to Fillets, so it's a similar scale, more maps, so the maps go back almost twice the distance, um, and it's more complex, but it's certainly based on this. Now look, I've got a lot of dice, but I don't need to target anything around this area. So I'm going to start hitting the coastal batteries. And I'm most vulnerable, I think, with my two battleships off Omaha Beach. So I'm going to start looking for these coastal batteries. There's one here. Nope, it's safe. What else do I have? There is one here, that's a miss. That's all I've got. They don't have a lot of coastal batteries. I think I've already done some damage to the batteries of Omaha. Um, Utah just has a lot of destroyers, so I'm not too worried about that. Whereas, actually, there's so many ships off uh, Gold Juno Sword that I will target some of these some of these coastal guns. So these guys here, the two is a miss. Um, they're all mixed up around here, so let's have a look. These guys here, a miss. Next to them, a miss. Further down, a miss. A miss. I've got three ice left. Way down. Oh, they're off the map, so they won't fire. Uh, not, not, a lot, not, a, not a lot left. 
Okay, let's head it back around to coastal batteries around here. Where are we? Um, this one here, miss, and this stack here, a hit. Okay, so these are all pinned. That's not a bad stack to pin, actually. Two guns in that hex. And one more way off in Ustraham is a miss. So what I get, two hits. That's a low average. You'd expect <laughs> on odds three. That's my abstract air bombardment. Now I get to the allied anti-battery segment. Well, it's going to have to play a preference on how things are handled. Yeah, yeah, look, like right now, so I've got all these, I've basically stacked them into value three fire missions. So I know just looking at this, I've got 12, 13, 14, 15 fire missions. And they're all of value three. If you look at the top right, that's their um, battery bombardment strength. So I know that that's three, 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 and so forth. So I can easily kind of move the ships around. With 15, I can take four, five, six, seven, 15 dice and spread these out across these beaches. I kind of still want to pin this unit, but I need a one. Um, I could hit, wipe them out with a one, pin them with anything less. Um, so I'm in a good position now where a lot of these sort of don't, actually, I can't target. Yeah, no, that's all right. Um, a lot of the dangerous units are sort of, can, can, won't, won't launch small arms fire against me. I will target that coastal battery there. And let's try and get a few hits in on these guys. So two on them, two on those guys in Ustraham. I may as well target the strong points that I'm not adjacent to whilst I can. So this is a huge stack here. Um, two strong points. So I'm going to spend two on the top, um, two on the middle, and then <clears throat> two on the bottom. That's six. Uh, yeah, you can see that. That's six naval missions out on that single hex. You can have multiple um, fire missions on a unit, but only up to a strength of three. And of course, the LCTs in the first turn are an exception to that. So I've got four left. Um, I won't do any damage to this strong point because it'll be plus three modifier. So even if I roll a one, it'll be a result of four, which will miss. Um, I could potentially get a one, maybe worth. So they can't tack across the cliff. So I don't think they have to roll. It'd be nice if I didn't have to attack this unit there. I'd need a one, but it lets me then focus all my fire on that single strong point. So if I can do that, four fire missions on that one unit, that'd be really nice. All right, let's roll some bones. Got two up here, needing um, three or less to pin, one to destroy, and it's a one. All right, so. This nest, with no modifiers, because it's not a strong point, it's not adjacent to friendly units, is destroyed. And we've got three sets of two. The top unit needing a needing a one to destroy it. I think it's going to be a plus... No, one, yeah, one to destroy it. Three with a plus one does nothing to it. Middle unit does nothing. Two threes again. And second one, three or less will pin it. A one will destroy it. So I got that the wrong way around, but managed to destroy that nest on the bottom, which will make subsequent attacks on Ustraham just that little bit easier. Yeah, I think you're right. We kind of accept what, what we get with D-Day. And whoa, sorry about that. Um I pulled the mic too hard and flipped the camera. Um, yeah, I kind of like trying different systems. Let's just saw it because of the table. Yeah, and I've heard that. I'm not sure. It's the GOS system, right? Grand old, grand old strategic system. Is that what it stands for? Um, so, 
two more two more rolls. A one would kill them. Nothing. That's a five and a six. Um, I'll move this away just so I can kind of see what's going on. Two on that next position. A one will wipe it out. Getting busy here, so bring out tweezers. And two more. Uh, where are they? Oh, that's the, where I allocated the four dice. That's where I really wanted to hit. So that's great. Um, now one out there. Ah, oh, wipes these guys out as well. That's a coastal battery. Okay, one less threat to my ships. And that is... Whew, gold, you know, sword done. You didn't like TTS? That was a... Well, I think we played a pretty good scenario too. That was one of my favourite scenarios. I can't remember the name of it, but I remember the circumstances. That's probably my bad teaching, sorry. It's often good to solo. I mean, I, I love soloing GTS. Just because you get some really good stories going and it's sort of open information, but the blind chip pull. All right, we shift now to Omaha. Hope you guys can see that okay. I can bring the camera a bit closer. There we go. And look at that glare for you. All right. So um, what have we got here? We've got 12 fire missions. That's what I had planned. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. How am I going to allocate these? They're all at three or less. Um, I'm not worried about these guys. You bought a ton of DD games recently. You want to try out the systems? Yeah. Yeah. Look. Um, yeah, they do different things. I mean, as I was saying earlier, sort of if you look at the greatest day, the greatest day covers this area here. Um, and you know, Atlantic War has a massive map. Um, I kind of dreamed of one day playing the greatest day, the full campaign, and just I, I doesn't fit on this table. So it's got a huge footprint. Um, the killing ground is meant to be very good with its expansion. So that's something I want to try as well. I might try and get a copy of that. Um, I've also got the Mighty Endeavor, which I was punching the other day. So punching and clipping. Um, so a lot of die just to allocate to this beach, um, but a lot of modifiers. So plus two if they're adjacent to a, a friendly unit. So, you know, if I target this, I need a one. Um, they're pinned, so they don't have to worry. Um, Take your time with the greatest day. Check out look, check out my videos, including my invasion beach videos, because there's a lot of. I mean, you can understand the rules. It's easy to follow the sequence of play, but knowing what to do is really hard. And the beaches are very different. So, sword beach, for example, um, you have to attack the nests first. I think there's huge nests on sword beach. No, sword beach has stacking, so you want to get gaps first. I think it's gold beach where you want to get the nests, or, or something like that. I can't remember. Um, so, look, relying on ones for so many of these things, they don't have to worry. They're pinned, they don't have to worry. It's really just this area here where I want to kind of try and pin units. But again, the fire mission from the ships only attacks a single unit. So, with 12 die, I could, uh, I could just fire everything and hope for a one. I'd need to be two separate missions. It would then enable me to kind of shift all, that's what I need to do. So I'm going to do, what have we got in this hex here? Yeah, well, I've been using, keeping the dice in place and then rolling separate dice. So I've got two um, nests, resistance nests here. If I go six on the top one and six on the bottom, that's, they're the units I need to wipe out to open this beach up. So six on the top, I just need a one to pin them and I fail. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, well that changes things. I could try to keep rolling, but let's roll it one at a time. So you, know, you don't have to pre-plan these fire missions, do you? No, you go one at a time. Unless the village never blow up. Commitment, yeah, you make a commitment. So let's try six on the bottom. Nothing. So, okay. This, uh, this, these guys, 
I don't know how many ships I've got there. Well, I think I'm close to maximum 30. So I was counting how many ships and I was getting very close. So 30 ships doing absolutely no damage. Um, that's disappointing. And last beach. Good old Utah out here, not causing any problems. As I said, the, um, the ships out here are really just out here to target batteries. Yeah, look, these dice, they came in this little box. I think they're kind of like, I think they're Warhammer, Games Workshop dice. Um, and there were 27 in this little box for a couple of bucks. And yeah, I have heaps of green dice. Now, I'm going to use these bombardments to target. I've got one, two, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, to kind of distribute my fire among the coastal batteries. Because a roll of one, We'll hit each of these. So, uh, and this was a tough stack to attack. So I'm going to send two dice on each. Two for the top one, needing a one to wipe it out. A two. So it's one less. A two. Two will pin it. So they won't fire back. Two on the middle stack. A one. So I kill it. One coastal battery there. And then two on the bottom unit does nothing. So one pinned will get one battery here firing back. Um, and then three more, which I think I'll send down to the twos down the bottom here. Um, and I think I'll just send three on the one, hoping for a one. Yep, I get a one there, so they're dead as well. So as I said, Utah Beach, not worry about the, the beaches or the resistance nests anymore. The infantry who have landed can take care of that. I'm just focused now on uh, coastal batteries making the role of the airborne a little easier up in the north and just kind of like easing easing the uh the path to shore now we have anti-battery or anti-ship fire and again mindful that uh the germans have lost a bit this is pretty easy to do they've got one up they need a uh, basically if i show you one of these batteries most of them are ones this one is a two they need to roll equal or less than a number to hit. If they roll, two less than, yeah, two or more. So only the big threes risk sinking a ship instantly. Yeah, normally 44, great, Mark Simonet. But I mean, look, if you're gonna get a Mark Simonet game, get, uh, get Caesar, Rome versus Gaul. That's, that's amazing. I've been playing that. We've played five games over the past week. It is that good a game. We packed like last night. We played three games of right, Caesar, Rome versus Gaul. Finished the game, set it back up again, finished the game, set it back up again. It's just this amazing game that kind of, yeah, you really want to keep playing it. So, Coastal Battery Fire. Got one out here needing a one to hit. It hits and damages the Orion. It's okay. Still in floating. Next one does nothing. Um, what other coastal batteries do they have around here? One here does nothing. One here does nothing. One in the middle here does nothing. Then that's it for Gold Juno Sword. And I've got some anti ship fire out on the and around Utah. And we've got um, one out in the far left, I'm sure. Yeah, here it is. One, two, actually it's got the one hit. That's not great. That hits the Nelson. That's what I was worried about. And a two does nothing. Oh God, they've only got three coastal batteries and they've done. Now two does nothing and a one does nothing. Okay, so four coastal batteries managed to Damage the Nelson, my big battleship up here. Okay, looking now at my fleets around Utah and looking for coastal batteries. As I said, there's one stack up the top needing a one. Of course, they hit and they've damaged the Bellona. Doesn't affect its um, battery fire, but it'll affect its bombardment support for infantry later on. A lot of coastal batteries out here, so you've got a two and a two. 
two uh, two, so it is sunk, and the next British cruiser is damaged. Then we've got one and one, nothing. A two, oh, that's another. The Sirius is sunk, um, and that's it. No other coastal battery. So that is. Whew, Quite a bit of a damaging uh, German anti-ship fire system. And again, technically that happens before the naval beach bombardment, but it doesn't really matter what order you do this in. We now have uh, so this special, 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 special landing segment. Um, Okay, so basically the way this works, it says it all happens in the infantry landing phase. I think this is sort of uh, for simplicity's sake. Head out to Salt Beach and we'll try and... So keep in mind, this is the, um, the first wave. So before the step of the first wave, there are no units on sword. Oh look, Ardennes 44 is the best of the lot. Um, Holland 44 um, feels very like luck dependent. You've got to get lucky with blowing bridges, and if you're unlucky, it can really suck. Um, whereas Normandy is probably the, I guess, the simplest of them all. Um, it's yeah, pretty tight, pretty tight focus on the whole Normandy campaign, like a one map Normandy. So I'm just going through, um, yeah, I go through the whole sequence, uh, so I've got to do tank landing. Yeah, look, Stephen, what's great about this is every ship, I mean, this is this is accurate down to, I went through the, the naval order of battle, and from what I could gather, it was, I mean, there may be one or two mistakes, but everything I saw was accurate. I checked sort of the, the battleships, the cruisers, um, and all that, and it was spot on. Maybe the LCTRs are abstracted to some extent, but certainly these are you know, the named ships that were initially at these beaches. I've moved a few around, as I said. Um, can I do that? Can I move these ships around? I think I've played that wrong. Ship movement phase. So they move at the end of the turn. PM game to No, so I've done that wrong. I wasn't allowed to move the ships around. Uh, I'll have to be mindful of that. They don't. They can spend a day at each location, not a turn. So they should all be shifted to the left. Still one day at location. My mistake. Uh, yeah, you saw what happened at Omaha Beach. It didn't matter anyway. I didn't build, get a single hit. And only two hits with all these ships here. So inconsequential mistake. Uh, okay, so we're trying to get our sh troops to the shore. Infantry landing, nothing landing here with this first wave. No demolition engineers anymore. No, oh wait, we do have some German small armor fire. These guys only have one unit, so they can pin on a four or more, and they do. But these guys are rank commandos, and they can't be pinned. So there is no pinning on Port Beach. Now we have uh, allied movement segment. I don't want to move up against this, these two strong posts yet. Um, I want to move out to the right. I want to not bump big stacks over. So I'll have seven on one. They sound like the kind of odds I'll take. So they'll move out to the right. Um, and then I'll get this stack to move in here and join with these guys to attack there. Just double, make sure, double check they're not pinned. Yep. Stacking is 12 in a beach hex, just a reminder. And four elsewhere during this phase. And it comes back to normal stacking of three later in the game. 
Um, yeah, what have I got here? 18, 18, 20, 21. So it'll be five to one, but that's still not great odds. I know it sounds weird. 21 to four is five to one. But on this CRT, I'm going to keep in mind, use the uh, five to one. I'm going to need to roll a three, four, 10 or 11 to succeed. Hey, I did just see it landing on the beaches. Uh, this is the second turn, first sea wave. Um, so I'm not landing any trips with this wave. We're just <laughs> at present deliberating whether or not I should take at least five to one odds. I will. I'm more than likely to to lose if I try to attack at this hand. So um, these guys can't move. So I may as well kind of ignore them and shift to the right. I now get two attacks. I get. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 on 2, which is 7 to 1, 8 to 1, 9 to 1, because of my two engineers here. 9 to 1 attack, 7 does one step of damage. Okay, not great. Would have liked 2 there. Zoom to a four, a two, four, or five, eleven or twelve to, to do that. Over here now, like I said I've got three, four, five, six, seven to one. Seven to one, six is a one step loss for the Germans. And again, my strategy or my tactic has been not to advance. If I were to advance, I'd suffer small arms fire, the risk being pinned, I can just wait there. But the important thing here, and the reason why I'm doing all this now is because now I can do my demolition segment. And this is, this is so important out of Salt Beach. I need sixes here. So I have six engineers. If I roll six here, five is okay. That increases to four. So we have four gaps now open. Makes this a little safer. The two, I roll a four, which is just one gap. Yeah, but that means now it's a little bit safer to bring these companies on to this beach. That's, uh, oh, mutual unpinning now. So these guys unpin. And where are my officers? Only one on the beach. So he needs a one to unpin. Oof. That's a one. Let me tilt the camera. It's a one. Trust me. So, with a nice big stack there unpinned, they're okay. Just a couple of small stacks over on the left there, but that's okay. We now have eight, uh, sorry, six gaps blown on sword. So things, oh, sorry. I forgot. High tide turn, we subtract two from the result. So it should only be one gap here and one gap there which is fine so i applied two there instead of one does this show how far out the landing craft the ships are from the beach no it's abstracted they're basically sitting in a box um, um actually um the greatest day does show that it's, uh Adam, I don't know if you've looked at the greatest day, but it actually has a pretty accurate, slightly abstracted representation of how far off the ships are. And you actually have to trace line of sight from these ships to spotters on the beach, and then from those spotters to your target. When you're learning the greatest day, I'd highly recommend using the Vassal module. I do all my gaming. I don't, I don't like using, I don't, I don't like playing um, the greatest sound vassal, I'd rather have the board set up, but certainly for landing, the vassal module visualizes all these things. It highlights what you can see. It highlights as you click on a, like let's say you click on a ship and then you drag it to a unit. If there's something blocking your line of sight, like a cliff here, it'll highlight that with a big barrier. Um, so you can kind of learn the rules. Don't, don't sort of rely on it, but, um, 
kind of read the rules, understand the rules, and then use the vassal module. And you know, if a big line appears and you don't understand it, you go, oh, that's the rule about um, crests or whatever, or a building blocking line of sight or smoke or whatever. So it's a good way just to kind of remind yourself of any issues that pop up. Um, outstanding module, um, I can't remember who did it. Brent, I think an Australian guy, I think. All right, so we now shift to uh, gold Juno over here. We've done the bombardment, any battery, blah, blah, blah. Um, everything's unpinned here. Um, I could land a wave, what'd I say? Did I say I was gonna land a wave? Oh, you know what, I, yeah, didn't land any trips there. They're about to land, so that's okay. Um, he wants to land as well. I've got to remember when I do land, and I might give this a go. Yeah, let's run through this special reinforcement landing during high tide. So I roll one die. Here we go, just to see how the landing goes. It's a four, and you can see here my gaps are four. So I don't lose any companies. Uh, pretty straightforward. They simply land on their beach. They land on their beach. And again, 12 stacking on these beaches. Um, so they're in a good position now to shift and attack those strong points. Again, these are pins, so they, they're not a threat this turn. That's it. I now could move up these other waves, but... Uh, oh, actually. Um, so... Special Arata, British and Canadian Commandos don't roll for drift. They don't roll for drift, they can't be pinned. I'm guessing they can still be wiped out, so maybe I don't want them. I don't know how that works, but... Maybe I'll play it safe and not send them onto the beach just yet. They might wait until next turn. And I'll put him in there with them. So that's it for the companies for this first wave. Oh, falling out of focus, sorry. Now we have uh, German small arms fire. We've got the strong point here. They can do some damage. I rolled a four, so a two, four on German small arms is just a pinned result. So, unfortunately, they pin this rather large stack. Not this one I'm handling, they've just knocked over, but the one next door. These guys are all pinned. Which is a bummer, because that was a pretty big stack. But they're with Foster, and he's had some good success with unpinning. Now we've got this uh, nest attacking. They need a four or more. They fail. So I will be able to get... Uh, how many have I got stacked here? One, two, three, four, five... Seven, eight, nine. Um, that's it for small arms fire on this beach. I can now move my troops. And I can move three into this stack. One, two, th three. And I can move. Actually, I can't, yeah, so that's 12 stacking there. I can't move any further anymore. Um, they're pinned. I can move these four into that swamp area there. Do I have any engineers available? Because engineers are really good. At, yep, here's some engineers. They're good at attacking um, strong points. So they will shift. I'll keep them behind. I'll bring the tanks up as well. Engineers into the swamp. Um, and then we'll get a stack of four. With no more engineers to move in there. 
So these guys will then shift up into there and I'll bring them up. They're pinned and these guys don't want to attack this unit or get close to it. Um, yeah, you don't have to attack pinned units, but they will unpin at the end of the turn and I'll have to attack them next turn. Uh, do I want to extend my perimeter? Capture Bernier Sumer or move to be in a position to attack them next turn. It might be good to do both. So, <laughs> problem solved. We'll do everything. By doing that, we kind of extend our perimeter, put two companies in a position to attack, capture Bernier Sumer, and that's it. All right, so as I said, I've got um, this stack here attacking the one um, car reduced company in Cursells, I think it is. I'm sure they weren't they weren't pinned. Uh, so I've got just eight to one. Eight to one sounds like great odds, but it's really not on this table. Anything can go wrong. Just just trust me. Eight to one four is two step losses to the enemy. So I lied. It is a good result. And again, I can I can advance, and I think I kind of want to um, to be in. A better position to either advance further or destroy this nest. Now I've got um, five with three armor. Five with three armor. I'm going to keep them over here so I don't have to keep getting in there. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, twelve. With what was that armor? Three armor. So twelve to two is six to one. Seven to one. Eight to one. Nine to one. Ten to one because my armor and engineers. Ten to one odds. Three is a dead. Strong point. Two hits. I only need one. Now, good opportunity to advance. We'll advance off the beach hex first, and I'll get. Uh, oh, it might be nice to. Actually, hold on here. There's a river hex there. That's not a river. It's a stream. Um, and a stream. Uh, has no effect on combat. So it doesn't affect my armor at all. I was worried I'd use the wrong column. Um, it might be better. I know I've got engineers here. It might be better to get more tanks across the beach. Across the the river. Actually, no. Um, kind of torn here. I've got three tanks. Um, engineers give it they're kind of an instant column shift, so I'll send the engineers keep the tanks over here. So that was a pretty good series of combat. They don't they can't attack across cliffs, so don't have to worry about that. That's a cliff there. That's why they're not attacking up the hill. Um, now. As usual, the all important demolition segment down on the beach. We have six, five, and five. So needing 20, yeah, I think I need some very good rolls. So six, five, and five. I've got rolls of five, four, and five. Um, so a six, five will cause two. Bring them to four. A five, four will cause two. Bringing them up to six. And a five, five will cause two, bringing them up to four. So we're now on 14. No, it's minus two. It is minus two because of high tide. So three, two, three. This changes things. Six, three is just one. A five, Two is just one. 
and a 5, 3 is just 1. So curb your enthusiasm. Um, so 11 gaps needing 20. We're just over the halfway mark on Juno. And mutual unpinning. These guys unpin. And I didn't move my offices, but I will do that. Um, because there's nothing out here to be... Oh, no, there is, sorry. Just the one officer on the beach. Just the one officer on the beach. Needing a two or less to unpin. Failing. But I've got enough units, I think, to, um, to continue expanding in this area. Now, uh, mutual unpinning done. Shifting to Gold Beach. And I said I was going to hold some back, right? That was my plan. These guys can't land. Um, so we can land with these. We can land with these. I want to get those officers. No, I don't need the officers on the beach. Um, but we're doing things. <laughs> We've got pinned units out here. I need to get Graham on the beach. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, that's enough to get him on there. He'll survive. So, um, landing. We roll a die for these two stacks of infantry. Hoping for a four or less here, a one. So these guys land and are safe. And we have Graham on the beach with a big stack of fresh infantry unpinned. And over here, four or less, a two, another good landing. Senior is just a level one commander, so he unpins on a roll of one. But uh, there are no pinned units here, so I'm not so worried about that. They are now on the beach, and we can move to German small arms fire. Small arms from the coastal battery. I'll move over here so my arms are on the way. Needing a four plus, they roll a one. Actually, they're here, they're already pinned, there's no effect there. This is the dangerous one. Um, so three, they're going to take the big stack. Three, three, I think we'll just pin. Three, three, we'll just pin this big stack with senior. So when you pin these assault units, you just flip them over and they can't do anything, they can't attack, which can be a good thing. That means they don't have to attack. And the nest on this other assault stack, meaning a four plus, they pin that big stack out there as well. All right, but now, oops, that should be. They were already pinned on the bottom. All right. Now my movement. Um, and I'm going to want to move him over here. No units lost, which is good. Him over there. Um, I will move three companies. No, I'll move four companies out to the left. No, I can't, because it's not a beach hex. Uh, I want to move my best companies, my tanks, my assault engineers, and two other companies up and into that gap to assault. Ooh, something, someone's going to have to attack that. Uh, this is going to be an interesting exercise. And the other guys... Um, you can move over here, can't they? I can exceed stacking in the beach. We go up to 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5. Can I? So you can stack 12 units in a beach. Um, I can't recall if you can attack with all of those units in the beach. So let me just check combat. Um, allied assaults, I tell the number of combat, all attacks are resolved. Number then four units may attack out of a hex, yeah, so I'm limited to four. So, um, 
don't know where these guys were. Oh, they were here. They here. Um, I've lost track of what they're doing. Here I was, I was over here. <laughs> so how did they end up there? They meant to land on the beach. Blackadder, Foster. I think they may want land with my reinforcements. Yeah, third division out here. I think. Um, so what was I doing? Um they have stacked there. Um, they've moved into the gap. There's no more I can bring in here, but I can bring four. No, I can't because they're pinned. I think I just have to kind of leave them on the beach, which is kind of frustrating because I want to. I want to be able to move through, so I'm going to move Graham uh, out here to the left. That's where he was, wasn't he? So Knox and Senior out on the right, trying to unpin these. I'll get two rolls. Graham will come out here, he'll get one roll, needing three or less. I now have to assault, and I'm going to send one company out here. It's a bit sacrificial. Um, two to one, basically. Two to one, seven, on this horrible invasion. Kills off that company. So it's a sacrificial company to enable me to focus. Oh, maybe I should have sent more, but too late now. To focus the bulk of my efforts against this strong point here. Um, so I've got five, five with four armor, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, and they're all pinned. So I've got 12 to 3, which is 4 to 1, but then, actually, no, I have to leave one behind. Um, how much armor have I got? This is where things get confusing. I've got 12 armor, and they've got 5, so I don't need to bring, that's two column shifts. I need, yeah, I'll leave those guys out. I need to with four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's three to one with, what's my armor again? Three to one with four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Let me change that actually. I'll bring those guys in, leave that armor behind. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen on five, so two to one. Oh, god, no, thirteen, four to one, four to one with five to one with my engineers. This is getting confusing. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, so two to one armor. So it pushes me up to seven to one, which is pretty decent odds. Seven to one, five, does nothing, no effect. All, all that work, but just nothing. Uh, and they're pin pinned. Now we roll for the engineers, keeping in mind it is a minus two modifier, and the rolls don't look great. This is now a one, that is now a two, that is now a two, that is a two. So, a 6 1 does 1. Okay, that's all right, better than nothing. A 4 2 does 1, pushes them up to 3. A 4 2 does 1, pushes them up to 5. And a 3 1 does nothing. Sorry, 3 2 does 1. Yeah. 4 2 1, yeah, okay. I think I did all that right. So now we have 15 gaps blown on gold. Gold is probably the closest to, uh, which is interesting. <laughs> gold beach is the closest to having, to being open based on gaps blown, but it seems to be pretty much the furthest based on the actual position, this situation on the beach. Still big strong point right in the middle there. Um, 
mutual unpinning now. I can roll for Graham out on the left. A four is nothing, and I get two or less. Nope, and a one. Nope, so no unpinning on this beach. Could be, well, okay, got a lot of stacks here, but the problem is they're increasingly pinned, and the Germans then target the unpinned stacks. There's only two there. If they roll well, there'll be no combat. But then, as soon as the beach opens, all those pinned units become unpinned. All right, let's shift around and look at Omaha. That's still the first, this is just the first sea landing phase. It's a very, very time consuming process going through all this. And this is me, you know, rolling dice pretty quickly, often rolling dice en masse. All right. Um, and this is we're landing these guys straight away. So a four or less, a two, they are safe, apart from the danger of this giant flying dice. And they are heading out into Fox Green to meet up with Colonel Taylor. We then have these guys needing a five or less, a five, they're safe, lucky those demolition engineers cleared those obstacles. They head out there into this big stack. All right, it's vulnerable to the Germans. Now we have German small arms fire. Looking here, they're already pinned, so there's no effect. A, a stack of one can't do any damage. It can just pin, and they're already pinned. This resistance nest here will definitely target the big stack and pin that entire stack. That's why I was sending all that naval artillery out there. All right, so this is also overstacked, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I can't actually send all those companies. You're not allowed to send companies to an overstacked beach. So I would have had to send one of these companies out, let's say, let's say uh, here, four or less, they make it. Sorry. Yeah, they'll go there, that's where they rolled. One company there. Um, these guys will roll for that company. A five might just kill them. No, it's just one, so they'll become pinned. So they arrive on the wrong beach and are instantly pinned. These guys, two, two can do some damage if they roll well, but not that. The nest, two won't do anything. The nest down here, a five. So we've got here, not nest, sorry, strong points. Four strong points, rolling a five, will actually do two kills on these guys. Now the good news here is, I mean, it's not nice, but they are relatively weak rangers and there are no demolition engineers on their beach. So we don't actually lose anything here. Whew. Now we get to move um, and three, four, move our DD out. These guys will move off the beach up into there. They can't cross cliffs. They still can't attack this unit out here. We'll get a stack of one, two, three, four to move up into uh, colville sur mer um, Not many of these units can move. They basically, uh, yeah. There's no attacks here, no attacks here, no attacks here. There's pretty much just the two attacks on. Wait, these guys were pinned, right? This is the one attack at Omaha Beach, um, and it's not a good one. It's a, oh God, it's not even two to one. No, sorry, it's just two to one. Um, the odds of this are very low, but need to attack two to one. A three result in two to one <laughs> is remarkably, a defender loss. I think it's the only, yep, it is the only defender loss. That's how low the odds are. Rolling a three gives you a hit, um, but just one. So <laughs> miraculous survival. Um, now I'm going to keep him there, keep Taylor there. Um, unpinning, there are no Germans to unpin. 
Oh, sorry, roll for demolition is the first, but a one pin for now. A one, nope. Three or less, nope. A two, so no unpinning on Omaha. That's why I brought these officers on, so they could help unpin. Now I've got a lot of demolition to do. Eight die rolls. Go green, blue, green, blue, good result there. Green, blue, green, blue. Okay, minus two for everything. One, two, uh, it goes down to four, that goes down to four. <laughs> That's a zero, so it'll be four. We can only get down to one, one, three, one. Yeah, Again, it's the high tide modifier. Okay, so a four, one does nothing. A five, two does one. So five, five, four does two, so that four goes up to six. That was the set, it was five, wasn't it? So it goes up to seven. A two, four goes up to three. A four, one does nothing. Four, one does nothing. Two, three does one. And a four, one does nothing. So, how's Omar Beach looking for engineers? Uh, what have we got here? 10, 17, 21, 24, 28. And they need 45. So this is pretty close to what I had in the, um, the Omaha Beach scenario that I played. I think it was roughly on the same same track. Um, that is Omaha Beach done. And we can now shift out to the last beach. And again, keep in mind this is still the first wave of this day. Uh, still two more to go. Oh, but fortunately for this wave, um, things are pretty easy on, on Utah. So sending the company straight on, Four, I rolled a four, so they can just arrive on that beach. And next one, five, four, they can arrive on the beach. Now there's more reinforcements to arrive, but I've reached the stacking limit. Basically, you densely pack Utah, um, and they can arrive in subsequent waves. German small arms fire, there's nothing for them to attack. So now I can move these companies up and down the beach. These guys are pinned, they're all pinned. Um, and like I said, I don't want to send, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five is two to one, three to one, uh, three engineers here. One, two, three. So it'll be five to two, two to one, with three columns shifts would make it five to one. The worst I could do is lose a unit, um, but next round they give small arms fire. So look, I'm just going to set myself up for a better attack next turn. Um, <laughs> they're my officers. These guys can move. Tanks, I want tanks. So I don't want to send all the tanks. Um, to the one location. So I'll split them up a little bit. One, two, three, four. Moving up the beach. Um, yeah, I might try to get these guys out into <laughs> slightly more open land. The Bocage. <laughs> Compared to the swamps, I guess. Um... So I'll move up there. One, two, three, four. I think they're overstacked. That may be a mistake from last time. Um, whew. Can tanks move through swamps? I think I'm going to try and get them to do so if I can. I want those engineers moving. Got a pinned tank on the bottom there. They'll try and move into there. And keeping my officers in this area where all my pinned units are. Okay. 
They can't, tanks can't move into wooded terrain. I know that much. Can they move through swamps? My feeling is no. Prohibitions. Blah, blah, blah. I say blah, blah, A class. Blah, blah. Uh, strategic artillery affects the terrain. Wood or swamp may not enter wood or swamp uh, when using strategic movement. May not enter wood when using, when using strategic movement using a road. May not enter swamp using tactical unless that hex has a road in it. It may be moved into a swamp hex through a non-road hex side. It doesn't have to follow the road. And this hex does have a swamp uh, a road in it. So as long as there's no tank here, that's okay. That one is illegal though. You guys can't go there, so we'll send the infantry that. Yep, can't go there. Fuck me, stuck a heap of units in that beach hex. And I think I will move all my officers down here and try and unpin. So I've got four officers mm -hmm. on Utah. One, two threes, two twos. Blues are threes, greens are twos. Blues are threes, that's a success. Yeah, I get one success which unpins all these guys now. Everything is unpinned at Utah now. Get one tank pinned at the bottom there. So Utah looking really good. Um, they have virtually linked up with the 82nd Airborne out here. It's not important, it's inconsequential. In fact, it makes things more confusing. Um, because, sorry, that's a bit out of focus. Uh, because the, <laughs> the naval invasion forces uh, follow this naval sequence of play and the airborne forces move and attack in the, <laughs> the non-naval sequence of play. So these guys don't move right now. They've already done their combat for the turn. Once these mix, uh, it's confusing. Oh, look, I'm one, oh, look, I didn't realize the, I'm one gap short of blowing this beach. That'll definitely happen. Oh, that's an eight. I've got eight engineers there, not four. I haven't rolled it yet. <laughs> okay, now we roll for demolition. We've got eight minus two is a one, but that is enough to open the right? Eight, one. Yeah, guaranteed one, which is five, which gives me my 10 that I need to open the beach. We have our first open beach of Operation Overlord. So what happens when the beach opens? I don't know, it's never happened before. <laughs> do, 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 blah, blah, blah. Blowing gaps, unpinning units. Transition. Once a landing beach reaches its gaps, it enters the post invasion phase. What was the total setup time? Oh, dude, it took me hours and hours. This is probably the longest I've ever taken to set up a game over three days. Um, once you're familiar with the game, what would this time be reduced to? Look, it's not so much familiarity with the game in terms of setup. <clears throat> um, it's just the difficulty in reading all these counts. They all look the same and it is so hard. Let me just grab this unit. It's so hard to read that. I mean, my eyes are pretty decent, but what is that even? F 50782. And every company, every company, every battalion has to be set up in the right location. Um, and like I said, I'm sure I've made a mistake. The other problem is there's a lot of errata and there's mistakes on the errata. So there's errata to the errata and then there's mistakes on the errata. Look, <laughs> it's, um, it was long, but you know, I took my time and uh, try not to make too many mistakes. But like I said, hours and hours and hours over three days, two to three days, just to set up the start of the scenario. And that's my point that if Omaha Beach fails or if you know, Gold Beach fails, that's a lot of time to set up. And like I said, I'm still in this invasion phase. I'm still trying to open these beaches um, after many, many hours of gameplay. Once you get beyond the beach, things really speed up. The 
Look, there's a lot of small scenarios. You can play, I played Fall of Schurburg. Um, there's Operation Ipsum. Um, they completely different. Um, they don't have this invasion phase and they're much quicker to play through. I think I played through all, how many turns was it, of Operation of um, Fall of Schurburg? Something like 20 turns in the time it's taken me to just run through these one to two turn invasion sequence of plays. So the um, the instant the number of gaps blown equals or exceeds that gap, the leaning beach has ended post invasion phase. I immediately discontinue the invasion phase. So these guys now don't actually arrive by beach. They have to wait. There's a special rule here. This is my second wave of troops. They wait until the next reinforcement phase and they'll just land on the beach as battalions. Um, the instant a beach reaches, all pinned allied units are unpinned. Oh, well, I went to all that effort to unpin these guys and they get unpinned anyway. Um, all leaders and demolition engineers are removed from the game. So we don't need these leaders anymore. Thank you for your service to the 4th Division. Um, who we got here? Triple A, then Fleet. Roosevelt, Brigadier General Roosevelt, and Barton. They did a great job there. Very happy with what they've done. Um, engineers, English engineers, and points are removed. We don't need to track that anymore. Allied units which land or have landed may begin to build up in battalions. Uh, I may land battalion side units without going through this lengthy procedure. Um, and the invasion stage rules are no longer in effect uh, instead. So the, the biggest problem here is I can no longer use my Navy to bombard these batteries. Um, I have to assault them. Um, so it might be worth getting these ships off out of this area. Um, they can now be attacked normally by the German player. Um, I can, however, attack normally starting with turn three because it's already passed it as part of the combat turn. Uh, and they can receive air support. So I now I, this is why I allocated <laughs> a large stack of units to air support. I was just really hopeful that I'd open at least one beach and be able to use them. You limited to two air support units per combat, but I've got some big, big B-26s over there waiting to help out. Uh, so I can't use bombardment strength on that map. Yep. Um, but I'm pretty sure I read that I get a free, free um, build up of my battalions out here. Into the beach reaches this gap number, I can uh, get a free battalion breakdown and build up segment. So free battalion breakup and build up, breakdown and build up segment. I don't want to break down obviously, but I'll certainly build up. Um, and look, to be honest, this is going to take me a while because it's basically sifting through all the possibilities here, trying to find all the fourth division. They should all be in a nice neat stack here. So it should be these guys. I've got to find the right spots for them. Um, uh, yeah. And that's going to take me a while, folks. So I'm going to finish here. That's the, incidentally the end of the first sea wave. So that's a good point to end as well. I'll do this free um, build up and then get ready for this second wave. Everything's mostly set up. Um, these guys will form back up into battalions again. But it's really the other four beaches now that I have to dedicate my attention to. So, yeah, just to recap, struggling with demolitions on sword. Um, Juno looking pretty good. Um, yeah, looking very healthy. We killed a few units here, pinned those, you may recall. They are pretty sure down. No, where are they? Is that up there? No, they were there, I think, weren't they? Um, gold is a bit of a concern. Um, but I'm only five demolition points away, and I'm confident this will open up next turn. That's very important. Get my demolition there. Uh, well, look, 
Yeah, look, it should have the next turn. Utah is probably still at least two C waves away. But yeah, it's actually looking a bit scary. A lot of pinned units. Um, we'll have to see that. See how that goes. I don't think it's going to fail. It's just going to take a bit longer to open up. Um, all right, folks. So, yeah, end of the uh, first C wave phase on the second turn, midday, 6th of June. Thanks, everyone, and uh, I'll be back soon.